and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. I'm your host, Richie Billing, and today I'm delighted to be joined by book blogger Blaze and Kona, who created the brilliant Under the Radar SFF Books, which is a blog and a podcast that spotlights books that you may not have seen or heard about before. Some are from traditionally published authors and some are from indie writers and indie publishers. So I invited Blaze onto the show to talk about his experiences as a book reviewer. And we chatted about how he got started. So if you're interested in trying out book blogging for yourself, then this will be helpful. We also chat about working with authors and sharing the perspectives, both of the the writer and the reviewer. And hopefully that honest conversation gives you some tips and advice on getting more book reviews. Before we dive in, just a quick reminder to follow or subscribe to the show so you don't miss any new episodes. I've also relaunched our YouTube channel and you can find episodes on there plus other little extras too. You can find the link for that in the description. If you'd like to support the show and want even more regular episodes, then please give us a quick share on social media to help us reach even more people or tell anyone who you think may be interested in the topics that we cover. If you'd like to learn more about writing fantasy stories beyond the airwaves, check out our Patreon page too. You can find writing classes and courses, books on fantasy writing, guides, interviews, and an invitation to our writing group where you can meet fellow fantasy writers, get feedback on your stories, and discuss ideas. Again, you can find the link for that in the description. Now, let's get on with the show and dive into a chat about all things book blogging with Blaze and Conway. I'm delighted to welcome the brilliant book blogger, Blaze Ancona, to the show. Blaze, welcome. How are you going on today? Hey, Richie. Very well, thank you. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and I'm just glad to be spending it with you talking about lo- my love of books. Oh, awesome. It's great to have you here. I'm uh, also glad to be indoors. It's, it's lashing rain today. Not very good, but you, it's quite common for Liverpool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, exactly. So now your website and podcast is called Under the Radar SFF, which is devoted to promoting and sharing fantasy and sci fi books that maybe haven't gotten the attention they deserve, and also interviewing some brilliant authors like um, Brian Staveley, JT Greathouse, and Janny Vert. So um, could you tell us a bit about it? Sure. So my um my book blog site uh, under the radar sff books i started in the heart of the pandemic so august sorry october of 2020 when everyone in the united states pretty much was shut down had to go go home not go out for any other reason i was stuck at home for 6 months doing nothing but going out and grabbing the mail and i realized i need to do something else with my time otherwise i'm yeah. going to go insane and i got the itch to look and try to be a book book blogger. But being just a, a any book blogger, there's thousands of book bloggers. Why would anyone want to read what I have to put out? So then I've always noticed like YouTube videos of people promoting very popular series like uh, Brandon Sanderson, George R. R. Martin, um, what have you, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Jordan, The Wheel of Time. But I always noticed that those aren't all the books that I've grown up reading that I loved to see no one talking about. Why are they not being talked about? Why is there not a bigger audience for these? So I'm like, let me do something for under the radar books, series, and authors, which I loved. And I think a lot of people would love as well. So that was my niche. That was my entering into the industry. So I bought my domain name, did a lot of research, wrote my first review, um, got opened a Twitter account, tagged the author, and away, away I went. And that happened for about a year. And then a year later, so October of 2021, I got the itch to, you know, try to do a podcast interview, a podcast, sorry, a podcast for myself, which is very outside of my norm. My industry where I do for professional work is finance and numbers. So I'm like back office guy, leave me alone. I'm doing my numbers. Just I'll get you what you need. So it was outside of my comfort zone, but repetition, 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 and being fortunate enough to go to grad school where they force you to give long lectures in front of each class, it kind of gave me the courage to try it. And I've been fortunate enough to interview very, very well-known authors, authors who are trying to get their works out into the world. Um, And yeah, it's just been a a real blessing Uh, a year later. I can't believe I'm at this point and being interviewed by 
you, Richie. It's actually my first one-on-one interview. So thank you so much for that. Uh, no problem. It's it's a monumental rise that you've had, and it just goes to show that like the angle that you've you've taken by focusing on the the lesser known people, it's it's really worked for you, hasn't it? Really clever idea. Yeah, and I was shocked when I was researching. I'm like, how come this um, domain name, like under the radar, wasn't tagged, or how come no one ever thought of this? I'm sure because every site or every um, blog that I've like seen, they do some aspect of like under like under the radar gems or unknown gems that people need to read, but that's just one small section. Yeah. What gives you hits if you're a blogger is reviewing the popular works uh, like Brandon Sanderson, The Wheel of Time, uh, George R. R. Martin and series like that. And that's that's how you make your get your hits. I didn't want to do that. I went away. I went against the grain because I don't care so much about views, popularity, who's reading them. That's not the purpose of what I'm doing. The purpose of what I'm doing is to give a voice to people who don't feel like they might not have it and to give notice to people who deserve it. Yeah. Um, It's challenging. Uh, I'm not, most of my blog posts are not getting like the high views that a lot of other ones are, but um, it's a devotion of love and I wouldn't change it for the world. And everyone I've spoken to, like the interview, um, the authors and other bloggers, like I appreciate so much for what you're doing because it needs to be done. Um, yeah. and I just wish that there was more people who did what I did, just this niche type of market. Yeah. And like you say there, it is such an important job that you do because I try and help uh, writers get as many book reviews as they can. Like I create tools like list of book reviewers and um, give them a tips on dealing with or going about getting book reviews from different platforms like Instagram and stuff like that. But it's uh, like you say, it's it's so tough uh, because you do it purely for love. So, you, know, you don't get paid. Um you, you 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 love these books and you you want these authors to to get the recognition they deserve. So it's it's such a vital role that you play, and I don't really think that all the time that book reviewers and book bloggers get the appreciation that they deserve because it is such a vital role that they fulfil in in the sort of in the whole industry. Um, like that, I, I've noticed how many more. Publishers are, are sort of getting large networks of book reviewers together because it's it like I say it's just influencer marketing, isn't it? What's your experience of it then so far? Have you had any opportunities to work with any publishers, or how how has it been in terms of like growing your platforms? So starting out with any blog, it's going to be tough because you're putting your name out there and you're trying to get traction more or less. So you're trying to reach an audience that might be interested in what you have to say as a reviewer. And going from there, starting off, I didn't have any real um, like uh, people to talk to, like in the industry or like publishers or like big, big like five publishing markets, what have you. What got me the notor the notoriety was just writing the reviews. And this, I think, this is important for any new blogger. Don't write when you start writing a review. Don't write the reviews you think people want to read. Write the reviews you would want to read yourself. Yeah. Because then, because then you're being true to what you want to read. People will appreciate that, and then it'll gr- start growing your audience sl- slowly but surely. Like, I, there's book bloggers who will write, I don't know, five, six pages of review about the book. That's great, and that's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time that I don't have to read. Yeah. I wanted to <laughs> write book reviews like max four paragraphs, like for like the everyday going person. It's like, okay, he likes this book. Why is he like this book? What are the main points? Boom. That's it. That's what I wanted to do. Quick and quick and easy. And then as slowly as I started to get more traction, I was able to make friends in the end um, of other bloggers. And they were able to give me contacts of like book publishers. Like I, I'm on like the ARC team for like orbit and some other small industries as well. So I get access to some of those um, early works as well. And that's what I review. And then the cycle just keeps continuing. So it's just keeping at doing what you need to do, um, making sure that you uh, are making friends along the way. Uh, Go on, do like guest blog posts, go on other podcasts, if you can, to promote what you want to do, do like read alongs, 
uh, do book do uh, book uh, giveaways just to just to build your build your audience and and just put yourself out there. It was tough for me because it's just it's against what um like I'm, I'm com- my comfort zone initially because I'm an introvert by nature. Yeah. But um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, you've got to push yourself, haven't you, to do things that you don't always enjoy doing. Like I, I remember with this podcast, like even my website years ago, I can I always never felt like I was worthy enough to have a website that no one would ever come on it or be interested in reading anything on there. And same for the podcast. So you've just got to push yourself, haven't you? And that's the way you you grow as a person. Yeah, it's not just with book blogging; that's in life. You push yourself every day. My dad always said. If you're not learning something new every day, something's not right because <laughs> there's always yeah. something new to learn every day within books, within your profession, within your marriage, relationships, what have you. So I've taken that to heart and I, I try. I'm not always successful, but you know, put your best foot forward. Definitely. You got to try. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring you onto the show was to give our listeners and writers as a whole more of an insight into what it's like to be a book reviewer and i think we've we've had a great insight there into how much time and effort you've had to put in to get it off the ground but what what is it like on a sort of now at the sort of you've established yourself and um, everything's going well like how many review requests do you receive a week on a month on average like just sort of on the day-to-day um side of things so I would say on average, I probably get between two and three review requests per week. Um, yeah. Sometimes that's less. Sometimes that may be a bit more. It it just it just depends. It's very very um, circumstantial. But um, that's like peanuts compared to some other blogs that I know. I know they get like upwards of ten per week. It just depends on the market that they're trying to reach, what they're and what they're trying to push you know if you get if you reach out to the bigger bloggers that have like i don't know tens of thousands of followers you there's a chance that they might review it and and uh and post about it and then that's how they get their traction me i'm doing more on the smaller scale it's just me i'm just a one-man show and um and i do a specific niche i guess any new any new author coming out is going to be technically under the radar because they're not known yeah but you know it depends on tastes and it depends on what you like to read and what you like to put forth on your on your reviews yeah and would you are you quite picky then about the kind of books that you choose to review i wouldn't say i'm very very picky um uh, i mean i'm guilty of my own subconscious i like what i like i'm a huge fantasy like epic fantasy and classical yeah. i'm getting into more into sci-fi than i once was because it's very hit or miss for me. Like I tend to like science fiction. That's not like the hardcore, like sciency types of verbiage yeah. and the and like the and like the generational ships and like the space travel that type of stuff. I tend to like science fiction. That's a little bit more like toned down. Like like Dune, yeah. Dune yeah. is a sci- is science fiction. I get that, but it's in like a fantasy type setting. It's on a desert planet. You have. You have uh, different interactions with people. You have the Benny Gesserit who control people and with their minds. That, yeah. Those are those are fantasy tropes. That's that's the type of stuff that I gravitate towards. Um, when I re- when I'm reviewing a, a blog, a, re- a request to review um, a book, I tend to read the what they what the authors send, and then I ask them like, okay, if you were to pitch this to me. How would you go about it? Um, mm. And what would you say is the strengths of this? And if it hits off with me, then I'll then I'll give it a shot. Sometimes it doesn't, and I say, "Thanks, uh, I'm I'm either not interested, or my my ARC or TBR is so full, and I can't take on anything new." And it is. Yeah. I have mountains of books I need to get through, and I'm sorry for any uh, authors of mine who who requested reviews for me that are still waiting. I promise I'm getting to them. So <laughs> yeah. Only so many hours in the day. Um, so that sounds really interesting. And so you, you have a bit of a conversation. Like I always say to people that you, you've got to pitch your book. You can't just assume that they're going to like it. You've got to really sell it. So is this is this something that you like to see in a book review pitch? No, it's not. 
that it has to be like formatted a certain way or needs to do I needs to hit like so, some points for me for me it's just okay what is the book about what are the main tropes what's the plot and is there like an interesting magic system me I'm just guilty of I like I like a certain I like the types of subgenres that I like I yeah. tend to not read I don't I don't read romance really books really at all and I don't mind if there's some format of that in the fantasy work, but it can't be the primary focus. That's not what I'm interested in reading. I'm interested in reading about uh, character interactions, I mean, conflict, the inner turmoils. There could be a good magic system and stuff like stuff like that. So, not it's not saying that because I might turn down a book, it's not good. It could be great. I'm just not the right audience. So, but. But I always say, like, hey, sorry, because sometimes people reach out to me, they promote romance or children's books. I said, I'm sorry, I don't review these, but I have contacts for people who do. Let me get you in con- Let me get you in touch with them. And that's yeah, what I do. Yeah. I, tr- I always try to extend myself oh, to right. put, put them in the right direction. That's very kind, yeah. Well, most people just wouldn't bother replying at all. <laughs> I mean, do, is there anything that annoys you then about a, a pitch? Does, I mean, do you ever get annoyed that people obviously haven't read your submission guidelines and they've sent you a children's book or something that's just not your thing at all. No, I don't, I don't begrudge anything like that. I don't, I don't get angry or hold any types of ill, um, ill feelings towards anybody trying to promote. In some cases it's their life's work. It's what they've always wanted to do. And I always will be respectful to what um, authors are trying to push out because if I was in their shoes, I would I would hope that people would feel the same way. I know some, uh, some people don't. The golden rule: don't do something to other people what you wouldn't want done to yourself. So I try not to do. I I don't do that. I don't put people down. I always put them in the right direction. Sometimes if I don't have a place to p- point them into, I yeah. just I just say I'm sorry. I I'm not interested at this time. Please let me know if there's any other help you can. Um, is there any other way I can help you? And hope you have a I wish you the best of luck. So yeah, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's really refreshing to hear that approach because, like you say, it's uh, most of the time when I send review requests, I was like, I can spend a bit of time researching the website, seeing what kind of books they've reviewed, just to make sure that they do fit, and then I'll obviously check out a few reviews. Like if, if there's a book that's quite similar, like I always mention, I've, I've seen, I've noticed that you've reviewed this book. Bit of similarities to my book. Would you be interested in reviewing that one? So, like, I always spend time doing a bit of research, but most of the time, I I just assume that reviewers have just got so much on that they just haven't got even got the time to respond. So, yeah, it's 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 a really tough game, I think. And it, like I say, you just do this purely for the love. Like, there's no. I mean, are, are you trying to to build yourself up to to monetize this some in some way? Have you got any plans to do that? Not my blog maybe eventually if my podcast grows into popularity and i be able to monetize that yes but that's not the purpose and if if that was the purpose then i wouldn't be doing the service that i provide for authors and myself any justice because yeah. money yes money runs the world money is important but it's not the end all be all in every situation and i do not want to make a situation here like yeah. i don't char- i don't I don't make any money off of this. I don't charge for book reviews. I don't charge for podcast interviews. I don't charge for cover reveals because I feel so guilty about that because why the book, the authors are already extending themselves offer. And most times if they're offering me like a, like a published book or a physical copy of their book, that's them spending their, their money to, to, for me just to promote something. Yeah. And at, for their, from their end, it's worth it because for me, liking a book and promoting it, it's worth 10 times that in terms of marketing dollars. So I've, I would feel guilty about charging any anybody something like that. So, uh, Yeah, that's fair enough. I've noticed that a lot more reviewers are starting to ask for fees for reviewing books and stuff like that. I mean, there's like Kirkus Reviews, isn't there? That's quite a big, well-respected reviewing platform. I think they asked for like $500. And there's that's no a- guarantee that you're going to get review. That's just a submit. Don't, don't do those. People asking <laughs> that, that type of money for a book review. Yeah. 
don't do it. I don't care how popular they are. It's not worth it. I, um, have you noticed this with competitions as well? Like a lot of competitions, obviously you have to pay to enter, but I'm guessing there's not a lot of many people who enter these $200 competitions. So you've got quite a good chance of winning. Are you talking about like book entry competitions that are yeah, being judged? Yeah. No, I haven't noticed them because uh, I'm part of like some, some uh, I was, I was part of some competitions judge, like the one that Mark Lawrence runs, the self published uh, fantasy blog off. I yeah. was a judge for that, not this past one, but the year before that. Okay. And okay. now the only, the only hiccup in that is that there's only 300 entries and you have to enter like right when the window opens, otherwise it closes up, but it's free. Uh, yeah. And all yeah. the, on all the blogs, entering them they do it out of the kindness of their hearts ones that are charging for it i don't know that seems very sketchy to me i never really uh thought that that was something worth pursuing for for authors but I, yeah. then again i'm not on that side of the table so i don't i don't see a lot of that stuff have you ever done any work with book tours or blog tours yes i do them uh quite often the ones i primarily do is um it's a uh, escape book, escapist books. Yeah. They're uh, they're great. They're run by a very good friend of mine, uh, two very good friends of mine actually. Um, they promote on Twitter primarily. Uh, and if you're a new now, they do require uh, a little bit of an entry fee, but that's that's peanuts compared to what you would get like in these big competitions. They find like five or six bloggers to read the book and then submit a review or a podcast or interview or an actual like Q and A interview yeah. and it's very very they do an excellent job they've grown it tremendously in the past year so if you're looking for um book tours to submit if you're an author i would highly recommend uh, that they're really good yeah i've used them before and i was really impressed i think it cost me about 50 pounds and i got like seven like a mix of rev- like you said reviews uh interviews and stuff like that i mean uh, you've been uh, part of these tours. Uh, do you, as part of when the author pays the fee, do you then get um, some of that money then that, for for being part of the tour? No, I do not get any of the money. The only thing I receive is the, I receive either the PDF or in some cases the the physical book. I get like the press release of it. I get the um, like the cover of the book to like promote when you write your review. Yeah, I don't receive. If you're a blogger, you don't receive any of the funds. That's purely for the um, the uh, admin admin group to put oh. like taking on this. Interesting. Never knew that. I just assumed that it got split. <laughs> nope, but, uh, uh, it's not true. Oh, there you go. Uh, so, is there anything that particularly turns you off a book review pitch? I mean, it might be like the perfect book. That uh, well, your perfect book. It's got everything that you like, but something about that pitch has turned you off. Is there anything in particular that would do that? Generally, I would say no. I've never really had like a book pitch that just turned me off, except except one, and I'll share it with you. It was <laughs> when I was turning when I was starting out. This was like maybe six months into me starting my blog. I got a I got a request. It wasn't really a request. It was just like. The title, the um, the cover, and then they wrote out the entire plot of the book, including spoilers. Yeah, I didn't even know what they wanted me to do with that. Just make a f- just make a fake blog post and saying exactly what they wanted me to say. Yeah, it was it was the weirdest. It was the craziest request I've ever gotten in my life, and I didn't even answer that because I didn- I showed it to my my wife, and she was like. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. I'm like, they're basically giving you everything of the book. Why read it? <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had any writers challenge your reviews? Writer writers challenge my reviews as yeah. to like some corrections. Well, say if you gave them like a three star. Oh, so I, um, yeah. So as a personal policy for when I do blogs, I don't put like ratings or star reviews in my actual blog post and and i don't write negative reviews yeah some some bloggers um feel like they need to or that they want to that's fine i have nothing against that i choose not to because if if i read a book and i don't like it the worst i'll do is maybe i'll leave like a low score on goodreads 
and that's it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't want to, like, I don't want to uh, cry over like spilt milk, or I don't want to pour like, like burning oil over the over the wound. Like, yeah. There, it's there's it's their life's work. Who am I just because I might not particularly like the book? Other people might love it. So, yeah. but people they um they follow me and they see like my reviews. If they don't, if they say I hated this with like a passion. Wow, maybe they will think twice. I and I don't want that. I want people to discover it for themselves. Yeah. Unless there's something so egregious in the book that I feel like I need to write it. Like if there's like a horrific like um assault or abuse in the book that I feel like or the writing is just terrible that I feel like I need to let people know about that. But generally, I don't I don't write negative reviews like at all. So I think that's fair enough. Like I always expect reviews to be honest as well and at the same time, yeah, if if they didn't like it, then yeah, there's no point. It's because chances are they didn't finish reading it anyway. So why would you give why would you force yourself to read a book you didn't like and then tell <laughs> everyone how rubbish it was? Quite a weird uh because like I've had reviews like that in the past and I was like, well, you still read it, so you must have liked it on some level. <laughs> I actually have a, a little bit of a question for you from an author perspective. Um yeah, yeah. for a book review, um, if people are writing or if bloggers are writing um a negative review. Do you get like people who tag you or like send you DMs saying how much they hated the book? Because I am always preaching to my fellow bloggers, don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very off off putting. It's it's very very mean. Um, yeah. And don't like it's one thing if you don't if you're writing a negative review and you just want to let the world know. Yeah, I've never had any direct messages telling me how much they they hate me. <laughs> No, anyway, no, I've not I've never had anything like that. But I, I will tell you one thing that um is definitely definitely a lot of writers do this is that people can say uh shower your book with praise, but if there's one negative review, they will listen to that negative review more than all of the positive ones. Right. I, I do that and I know a lot of other writers do that. I I I don't know why it is we do that. We're quite um curious creatures, I think. And that we <laughs> we're all quite insecure, and um, especially when it's a quite a solitary vocation because you've, it's only you, and obviously you've got editors and stuff like that involved. But you, by the time your book goes out to the world, maybe two, three, four people may have read that book. I mean, if you've got beta readers, you might get well more than that. But Generally, when it gets to that arc stage, not many people have read it, and you're always a bit apprehensive about what they're going to think. So, yeah, you do always focus on the negative things. That is definitely something that I do anyway. And I, I think it's just one of my problems anyway that I just can't, I don't trust. If someone tells me that they like something, like I don't trust that they're telling the truth. And that is just imposter syndrome. And a lot of writers have that as well. Like uh, I've interviewed Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, I think he, when your first episode was covered Adrian Tchaikovsky's Shadow of the App Box and he was saying as well one of the first things he said to me is like I introduced him as um, the award winning Adrian Tchaikovsky and he was like oh, that just gives me so much imposter syndrome when I hear award winning and yeah it's quite refreshing to hear so even someone as, as successful as him still gets this imposter syndrome because I've never really been able to shake it, and I've been doing this for like seven or eight years now. So there's a bit of an insight into the writer. Well, I feel like it's human nature um, to, yes, you you shower the praise, and you're you're happy and confident in everything you do correctly. But there's always that itch in the back of your mind: is like, okay, what didn't I do correctly? Why? And let me just try to beat it with a with a stick to see to get it how um, to get turned into a positive. That's just human nature. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting thing. Um, so what about your challenges as a book blogger? Do you have any big um sort of obstacles that you need to overcome or that you've encountered so far in, in your journey? Not so much now since I've been doing this for over two years. But starting out, as I said uh, earlier, it's finding your groove in the in the blogger sphere. It's putting out the reviews that you want, picking the genres that you like, and what you want 
um, readers and and other uh, reviewers to get out of your um, blog posts. It's 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 just finding your your place and keep on doing what you're doing if it if it makes you happy. Don't yeah. do something that doesn't make you happy because then you're just so then why do it? You're just wasting your time and you're wasting other people's time because you're coming off as ingenuine or not or not genuine. And after that, once you find your your place and you're making uh, a lot of friends, you're making followers, put yourself out there. Do stuff outside of your comfort zone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Read alongs, book tours, reach out to authors, go to author conventions, uh, like Comic Cons or what have you. Um, I'm actually going to my first one in March, um, the ICFA in uh, in Orlando, Florida. So nice. that, that's going to be fun to meet some of these authors who I've been speaking to for a long time, but finally get to see in person. So yeah, oh, keep, that's really pushing cool. keep pushing yourself. Yeah, you've got to, I mean, yeah, I think that's one of the best things about writing and reading as well. Like you just keep pushing yourself to, to find new books and to learn new things. That's what I love about it. Like you learn something new every day. It's one of your philosophies, like you say. Learn something new every day. And that's what I love about writing. The question I always ask book reviewers whenever I chat with them is, do you feel that writers and publishers appreciate the role that you play? in the uh in in the industry absolutely especially the type of authors who i generally um promote like under the radar uh, authors uh who are just trying to put their names out there bloggers are essentially their version of like a the marketing department if for a big industry so not obviously not every i think 95 percent of writers do not have that six figure guaranteed contract from the publishers where you're just pumping out story after story after story like like Brandon Sanderson does they don't have the backing of and the marketing dollars so so you become your own if you're a self publisher or an indie publisher you become your own marketer and you become so you have it's your job to find the the people who might enjoy this book sending out feelers if they would enjoy them and if they do enjoy them they would obviously write reviews about them and then away you go. And then it's up to you to do like interview requests, do question Q and A's, um, put yourself for the extra step. Yeah. Bloggers are taking yeah. a big part of what used to be for traditional publishing um, assigned to like just a marketing agent. And essentially they're taking away from that, doing it mostly for free and, um, it's a big part of the industry nowadays. Now, I don't feel like m- what I'm doing personally uh, even skims the surface of what this community can do, but um, I feel like it's definitely an important step. And I've gotten so many letters, uh, sorry, emails and um, messages from people who are saying, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing. It's so important and you need and just keep up the good work. I get that all the time. And that's yeah. really touching. Yeah, it's true. It's so true because, like, with how how else would writers be able to get their work out there, and and particularly the the work that you do in promoting the lesser known books and, and authors? It's really really important. So yeah, it's probably more vital than any other book blogger that I know. No, thank you. <laughs> so, um, question to finish on: uh, What are your top tips for anyone submitting book review requests? From the author side or from like a blogger side? From a blogger side. So what what is, if you, you get a, a query in or what, what can that author do to give themselves the best chance possible of winning you over? Um, I would say just be uh, genuine about uh, one, what the book is. Two, and I find this more and more uh, helpful, if they write, if they write their experience writing that particular um book like what are the main themes that they're trying for people to get across and what it means to them i'll give you i'll give you a great example the interview i did actually was yesterday with karen luwachi she was telling me about when she wrote her war child uh series and it deals with it's a uh, first off it's a science fiction um story but it deals with harsh realities when it comes to 
um, piracy, when it comes to child abduction, and when it comes to like abuse and child en enslavement, um, because it came out in 2002, and it didn't, and books from then didn't really touch on that perspective from the child's point of view. And when you read it, you realize like, wow, she's really hammering this point home, and it just tears you to pieces sometimes. Um, putting forth like their own uh, like emotion into like what they're trying to convey to the ma bigger audience that goes a long way with me because I'm a, I'm a character reader and I'm also like an, uh, very good with em emotions. Like I want, when I read a book, I want to feel, um, like happy. I want to feel crushed. I want to feel yeah. like destroyed so in some cases, depending on what I'm reading. Um, if I have that, I'm a fan for life. That's, <laughs> That's just me, but um, I feel like that's true for most people as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good advice. I mean, I've, not, I've noticed some people when they're talking about like putting a picture together, they might use comparisons to other books um, that have I've, I've been uh, reviewed on their website before or just popular books, like they might compare to like Lord of the Rings or Brandon Sanderson's books or whatever. Now, I've I've heard some book reviewers don't like that but others do so i mean what what are your thoughts on that particular comparisons yeah it's hit or miss um i i it doesn't bother me at all i know some other people it does because they'd rather discover it for them for themselves when yeah. reading it um yeah there's really no good way to answer that it's just it's hit or miss because it's all subjective it's all taste related yeah, I think that's totally spot on. Yeah, just like it is. It's if you get it wrong, then it can it can work against you. But uh, if if I think of the of the people have likened your book to something, then you could turn around and say, uh, other reviewers have likened it to this kind of book. I suppose you can say that, can't you? That we no problem with that. Yeah, if like another author or blogger gives you like a blurb or something. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with putting that blurb in the email. There's nothing wrong with that because then they're saying, "Oh, I know this person or I know this blogger. Let me let me actually look up the review, or I'm I might be more inclined to give that a go." Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, awesome. Oh well, please thank you so much for for chatting with me today. It's it's been really interesting uh, getting that uh, insight from the book blogger's perspective. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. No problem. Uh, how, how can we find out a bit more about you and Under the Radar SFF books? Yep. So you can find me um, on Twitter. I'm at Under the Radar B2. Uh, my website is uh, Under the Radar SFF com, And I do a corresponding uh, podcast, which is the same name, Under the Radar SFF Books podcast. Um, I try to do book, book, book reviews every week podcast coming up a little less frequently but i'm getting back on it and uh yeah i'm always available feel free to reach out awesome thank you very much please and thank you everyone at home for listening thank you again blaze for chatting with me about book blogging i really enjoyed that i hope you did too reviewers are in a way professional readers and the insights that they can give writers i think are really vital so i hope you learned something new there and i hope you get some more reviews as well if you did enjoy today's show be sure to follow or subscribe so you don't miss any more and if you want even more episodes weekly ones maybe who knows then please support the podcast by sharing this episode on social media or with anyone you think may enjoy it and head over to our patreon page too where as well as supporting us financially so that we can do more episodes you can also get access to lots of awesome goodies like writing classes all on fantasy books interviews and guides, plus a Fantasy Writers Toolshed t-shirt. Thank you for listening today. We'll be back on the 14th of Feb with another episode. And until then, keep on scribbling. Scribble, 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 scrib